crazy thanks a lot everyone for all your support uh, thanks for watching all my videos and even though I post videos like very sporadically it's awesome that you guys you know stay tuned in and you know stay supporting my channel really appreciate it and um, you know it's it's awesome that these videos are actually helping people out and uh, people think they're cool so definitely gonna keep on going with this um, so I just like to say again thanks for all the support 1,000 subscribers, awesome. Anyway, on to business. This is the KA block that's gonna go into my 240SX convertible. Um, it's pretty cool because this is the original block, so the car is gonna get its original engine back. Um, as you can see, it's completely torn down to its bare state. Today, I'm just gonna show you guys how to do uh, your piston ring gaps, uh, which is actually very important pretty much what happens is you have these rings around your piston. These rings around the piston help with the compression and they also scrape the oil down out of the cylinder on the downstroke of the piston so when your piston comes back up it's not burning all that excess oil that was in the cylinder. Now these rings are not complete circles obviously or else you wouldn't be able to get them on the piston. So they're, they have a cut in them so that you can slide them over the piston. Now here's a piston ring um, from, this is just the, the factory one that I took out. And you can see this gap here. When your engine heats up, this ring expands in the cylinder and this gap actually closes up. Now, when, you, when this gap closes up, you don't want the ends to butt because if the ends hit each other, then the ring has nowhere else to expand. So it's just going to expand outwards and scrape up your cylinder, seize your piston, and do all kinds of funky stuff. So what you do is you gap this, you make this gap a certain you know, width so that when your engine heats up you have a certain amount of gap in there so that the ends don't butt and then your cylinders don't die. And so that's what pretty much what piston ring gapping is. Um, to find out what kind of gap you need if you're doing OEM specs you can just go to the FSM or um, if you've got aftermarket pistons like I do. Um, they usually come with a chart that tells you what kind of gaps you want to run and according to you know how much power you're gonna you're planning on making. So with that said, we can go into here and I'll show you guys how to gap these rings. Alright, here are some things that you're gonna need to gap your piston rings. Obviously you need your rings and um, I did a few of these already. Um, but I left the one for you guys, so we'll get that one. Alright, so you got your piston rings that need to be gapped, and this is a piston ring file. I actually got this from Summit Racing. There is another kind of piston ring filer, which is kind of like a circle, and then it has a little area where you can rest your hand. I did I did buy that initially and I didn't like it because another huge thing is that when you're doing these gaps, when this gap closes, you want it to be completely flush. So you don't want, you know, if you're if you're grinding this down and one side is not even, then when this gap closes up, you know, it's not going to be flat. It's not going to be completely flush. And the gap doesn't really close all the way up, but if one side, if the inside of your gap is smaller than the outside of your gap, you know, the inside is going to butt before the outside and you don't have a accurate gap measurement. So when you're putting this in here, you know, if you're just randomly filing, you know, if the ring is not straight, you're going to have an uneven gap. So what this one does it has these two pegs here, 
and when you put your ring in there it's automatically straight so you know that everything is squared up and so when you're grinding it um, you know that this gap is going to be straight and that's why I like the Summit Racing uh, piston ring filer. I got one uh, from Speedway Motors or something and which is the other one I was talking about and these, it does have the pegs but they're a lot closer together so you can still kind of mess up so and especially if you're doing it for the first time you know this one it makes it a lot easier to get everything squared up so there's that um, these are called feeler gauges and this is what you're going to use to actually measure the gap after you file file some off um, you know this is this is a not so great of a one but usually I get two of them um, just so I can measure with two feeler gauges and if both feeler gauges tell me the same thing then my gap is probably right so that's why I use two sometimes three this is something that's good to be paranoid about because you don't want to do it wrong and then have to pull your whole engine apart to do it again so that's it ring filer your feeler gauges and um, you know just some just some random motor oil to kind of lube up the cylinders so now that that is said um, you know what you need let's get into the engine and I'll show you how to start doing these ring gaps alright so here is your four cylinder KA this is a .020 over bore so just in case you wanted to know anyway so we can take our piston rings and start putting them inside let me give you kind of an idea of what we're doing here so first first and foremost get some oil and put it on a you know rag or something blue towel and um, put some oil in your cylinders if your engines have been sitting around it should have oil in it anyway but do this so that you don't cause any excess scrapage to the cylinder walls so I'm oiling one and four because I'm doing cylinder four and I'm just gonna show you cylinder one since it's already done okay I got the oil in there so you got two rings um, this on the Waseco pistons this is the second ring and this is the first ring uh, I'm just gonna do the first ring filing them is the exact same so I'm just gonna show you guys how to do one of them okay so to put this in generally what I do is start it like this squeeze it together until it's in there a little bit and then you just kinda push it in be careful about these ends because um, they kinda will scrape up your cylinder wall if they're not nice and smooth so be sure that those ends are nice and smooth and so you kinda got your ring in here now what you do you get one of your pistons now here's one of my pistons um, you can see I put the second ring on here already um, and you'll see why just in a second but this ring is already gapped and everything um, all you do is kind of expand it put it over the piston it's not a big deal so the reason I put this ring on here is because you put your piston in here and then you push down until the ring on the piston meets the deck. Now you pull this out and you know that now you know that your ring is in there and it's in there perfectly square. Okay so this is cylinder one and now you can see the gap I'm talking about. This is the gap that you are measuring and this is the gap that you want to to make the proper size. Now like I said before your gap is going to depend on your build and you know all kinds of stuff like that so for my build um, the gap on the upper ring is going to be 0.018 inches and the gap on the lower ring is going to be 0 0.020 inches so I got my feeler gauge um, 0 0.018 okay and all you do is you take this feeler gauge you put it in this gap and it went in all the way so it is at least 0 0.018 inches now unfortunately this feeler gauge doesn't have 0.019 but I have one that does okay 
So get this feeler gauge, 0.019 inches. And let me put it in here. It kind of starts going in, but it doesn't want to. And it shouldn't take a lot of pressure to put this in here. It doesn't want to go in. So it's not 0.019, not quite, but you take the 0.018. This feeler gauge also has 0.018. So take the 0.018, stick it in here, and it slides in. And almost. Yep. And there it is, 0.018. But the 0.019 doesn't really go in. So we know that that gap is 0.018. So that's how you measure your gap. And that's pretty much what you're gonna keep doing until you get your the gap that you want. So let's go ahead and gap the ring for the fourth piston. Okay, so first, first order of business is to get this ring in here. So just like I did before, squeeze it. Careful about the edges. Okay, I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit. So that I can get my piston. And push down. And now the ring is square. Okay. So, you can see that gap is a lot smaller than the other one because this ring is ungapped. So what I do now is I take my feeler gauge and I'm going to guess that that's .012. So I'll give my 12. Let's see if it fits. Okay, the 12 fits in. So, it fit in a little too easily, so let me get a 13. And the 13 fits in very easily, okay. Let me get a 14. Okay, so the 14 doesn't quite fit. Oh, oh there we go. Okay, 14 almost fits in. I don't think 15 will fit. 15 doesn't go in all the way. Okay, so we're between 0.014 and 0.015 inches. What I want is 0.018, so take this ring out and go over to the ring filer alright so here is our ring file now when you do this you have to know which side is the top of your ring um, in the Wiseco booklet it says the top ring is going to be marked with some kind of marking if this camera would decide to focus in at any point anyway the top of this ring has a marking there, you can kind of see it, even though my camera is being dumb. Um, it, it's just an N, so that is the top of this ring, okay? Okay, so what you do is you take this ring, put it in here, you square it up. Now, what some people like to do is put it in here and squeeze it, so that both sides get filed at the same time. You actually don't want to do that. Um, you want to file only one side so that you have the other side for reference when you squeeze it together you can see that if it's you know flush or not if you squeeze it together and file both sides when you take it out and push it together there's not going to be any gap in between even if you're crooked because they would have been filed together so you just want to do one side you just want to take material off of one side of it so put it in square it up hold it down and make sure you know that it's all squared up and you want to file from the outside in, not the inside out. So you're going to go this way. So push this in here and give it a few turns. Okay. Make sure that these corners aren't sharp, you know, or sticking out. Make sure there's no burrs sticking out that way so that we don't scratch up our cylinder walls. And now you can kind of squeeze it together, check if you had a straight cut, you know, squeeze it together, see if that gap is straight, looks good to me. And now we can go back to our engine and put it in and measure it again. Alright, so cylinder four, dang, I have some surface rust here, I'm going to take care of that later. Anyway, um, take your ring, put it in here. 
push it in. Get your piston. Square it up. And now measure. So, whoa. All right, I didn't take quite enough off for 15. But, um, okay, I just have to take some more off. So that's really the process that you have to go through. It's just doing that over and 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 over again until you get the uh, value that you want. Um, like I said, that piston ring filer is a really good investment. Um, it cost me about 60 bucks. Um, and I mean, if you take it to a shop to do the filing, you're going to have to take your block there, you're going to have to take your rings there, your pistons and everything. And then they'll charge you about 80 bucks um, and they'll do it as they get time. So you never really know when you're going to get your engine back. Plus you do it your own on your own, then you, you learn a lot. Anyway, enough talking. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get these rings filed properly. I believe I have a proper gap on the fourth cylinder, 0.018, and it goes in. So now what you do after you've gapped all your, made all your gaps, um, put each ring in its corresponding cylinder and check the gap on all of them and make sure that they all feel the same, I guess you could say. Um, make sure that you have to apply the same amount of pressure to push this feeler gauge in on each cylinder. So just compare them and see how close they are. Cylinder number three and cylinder number four are kind of tight. So I'm just gonna take out three and four File them down a little bit, even though they're all 0.018 right now. Um, you know, this one might be 0 .0, 0 0.018. This one might be 0 0.0179. So you know, I want to get them exactly as close as I can. And I mean, probably doesn't make too much of a difference, but uh, this this will all play a role in your compression uh, figures and how much compression is different between the different cylinders and etc. So that is how you file down your piston rings. Hope this video was informative. Please subscribe to Project Garage. Also, I have a Facebook group, Project Garage Facebook group that you can join and kind of, uh, I guess it's like a mini forum. That's how the Facebook groups work. Um, so you can join that group, ask questions there, I will answer them, other people will answer them. It's a very cool setup. So go to the Project Garage Facebook group, I'll put a link in the description, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.